Oi. Hey, morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra special big up to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Before I go any further, I need at least two people to say, we hear you loud and clear, SoFlo. Just say yes. Can you hear me? Say yes. Let me make sure that this microphone is working before I go any further. I'm excited for a couple of reasons. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Everybody in here this morning that's commenting is going to be people who have their membership. The channel, the chat is open and it's live to the public. That means anybody who's subscribed to the channel, even people who are not subscribed to the channel can actually still watch the live. But participating individuals who will be able to talk amongst each other and sharing jokes and laughter and stuff like that will be only the people who have their paid membership. So your name appears in green. I found it this morning. I found it on YouTube. Yo, I never searched it enough. I was kind of disappointed because we found it once and we had a festive morning with enough people upon the show and only green names were here. And I thought, was I imagining things or what? Found it again. All right. So by right, the people who have their name in green are people who paid members are supposed to have special privileges for a lot of different things. For instance, I'm thinking of doing live, but I want them to tell me when to do live on the weekends. It will be Saturday and Sunday or a Saturday night live or something like that, right? So Saturday night where we just get festive together. It's supposed to be for them. You have to put different perks for them because what else is there, right? Um, them cannot get the same thing that everybody else is getting and they're paid members, see? So with that said, I'm glad I found this one this morning. I haven't seen anybody who is not in green comment yet. So <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I found it. All right, people, listen. Big up to everybody that's tuning in this morning. And I know how I'm stay already. I have to do my morning thoughts intro the proper way or else I'm thrown all the way off. So morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. It's the freaking weekend, baby. <laughs> clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Shout out to everybody going out to work this morning. Shout out to everybody coming in from work this morning. Extra special, big up, shout out to the multiple people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers, the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery driver, round town and long distance truck drivers, garbage truck drivers. Shout out to the Brother Troy Stars trucking vlogs on YouTube. I've still been checking on Troy and I haven't seen any uploads or anything. People are going to go check on him and find out how I go on with him because he ain't linking me and I'm not seeing him. Shout out to every single clean hearted, good hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. Shout out to Shakira Spear, which is wifey. And shout out to Eat Good TV. We are going with the good things them, don't it? Hey, I'm, I'm loving Eat Good TV channel. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of you over there. And I also notice a lot of changes to the channel. The channel is growing rapidly. I love it. I love it. That means we are mobilizing and we're uplifting each other, right? Not to mention Shabbat. Bami burger, though. I have never eaten Bami burger. I never know said Bami could have made burger. I thought Bami was for, you know, you fry over the Bami in the morning and then you have your Bami with little salt fish and little aki and them kind of thing. I mean, you know said Bami could have made burger. But I'm learning new things, all right? And I'm learning it from Eat Good TV. Um, five Field 63, big up yourself. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Somebody else says, seems I'm early for once. Unstoppable Josh. Let me pick up some people in here this morning, and then we're going to get into our topics. This morning, I'm actually going to talk about how, listen to this. I, I, I talked to Wifey about this yesterday, see? And, oh, oh, for those of you who don't know, this channel, this, this microphone, uh, you wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. This microphone right here is not the microphone that's actually working. Let me just put it there for styles, see? So... The new mic now is one of these mics, some fancy mics uh, when we have up here. So this is called the Yeti. Pretty expensive. 
um, but the sound is better. When I went and watched over the live yesterday, the sound is crisp compared to how it was before. People always, I say, you know, you know, you got to try to better yourself. So I'm trying to better myself. We're trying better things. We're trying to grow into a brand and be more than just sit on here and chat every day. Because that's the way the world is. You know what I mean? If you ain't got no money, get you some. If you ain't got no hustle, get up and get you some. That's all it takes. Put your mind to it and do it. Not true? All right. What's me about six picking for feed? So you know the struggle is real. And you know some out here in it. Right? For those of you who are wondering what's behind me, those are my shirts. I wrote this down yesterday and I actually put it on the video we did yesterday morning. So these shirts are special designed. Don't think you can find this like this. I'm the one that actually took the flag, put it into the um, software, took the coat of arms, put it into the software, sent the coat of arms on, and then pop the colors, bring out the yellow, that, 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 bring out the red, uh, define it more, all this, and then lick about with Talawa. So uh, I mean, design all of them here, right? And all these are designed, are special designs that are only available by print. So for the people who've been asking, yo, SoFlo, how can I get that shirt, this shirt? It's SoFloTV at gmail.com, just like everything else, right? The business email, SoFloTV at gmail.com, just link up, text a couple of lines, I want the bomber cloth red and white shirt in extra large. Or I want the Caribbean bloodline shirt in large. Or I want the rebel love with Bob Marley on it in small. Or I want the bomber cloth, don't be scared, I'm just expressing myself in small or large. And we have youth size available as well. And you just tell me where you want, that's all. And then we'll go from there. Payments are accepted through Cash App and PayPal. And each shirt is $40. It's specially made. So it's not like you have to pick up a t-shirt in our store and all that. And nobody else will have the shirt except for somebody else who bought the shirt from here as well. Or if you see me wearing them. So that's where we're at with that. But I'll put the info underneath this video when I'm done this morning. My wife we talked yesterday. Mr. Babes, I'm going to tell them about how we actually really met, right? Something about taking her out of a strip club seven years ago. So stay tuned for that. We'll soon get into that. Let me big up some people first, then we get into our topics. All right, so let's start out with great goodies is in the building this morning. Great goodies, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. June O'Brien, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Somebody is like, take her out a strip club seven years ago. What? Where did this come from? Asarin Odetta, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Carrie Ann Jones, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Seymour Bennett, Asarin Odetta, Juno Bryan. Juno Bryan says, we Geminis can be a handful. Ask my husband. Happy birthday to her. Ah, yes. The picture on the icon says happy birthday. It is not wifey's birthday. Wifey is on the icon because I'm going to talk about how I took her out of a strip club seven years ago. How we met and, you know, we said, yeah, you shouldn't be there. Whatever. The happy birthday is for my daughter, Malani. My little princess turns two years old today. Today is her birthday. And I'm extremely excited because we have a bag of things planned for her, you know, photo shoot. And wife is a she cook this mac and cheese, uh, oxtail mac and cheese and all other kind of thing. Mac and cheese, oxtail, oxtail, mac and cheese. I don't know. I think she should vlog it and show it and all these things, you know? So we're looking forward to all that, celebrating the little princess birthday. Today is her birthday. She's two years old. She just turned two today. All right. So help me celebrate for or send out a shout out to my baby. Y'all know how I do already. Crazy about my babies. Um, not have no sense. My head no good when it comes to me picking them. That's how I stay, especially my girls. I go cuckoo, you know? All right, so Seymour Bennett, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Vanessa, thank you. King Biggs, morning fam. Tai Tai Jai Empress in the building, big up yourself. Prelis123, big up yourself. Audrey Wright is here. Mervyn The Point, Jamaica Kerr family, big up yourself. It's Friday, family. We made it through another week. All right, by the week, I'm a fly by fast enough. When I stay there, think when I stay young. The week that my, every week me feel like me I get older. Me I have to remind myself, say, no, man, you're a good one. It's just 
It's just a few days. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. The goddamn week, yeah. It's just flying by. What month are we in now? We are already in the sixth month of the year. And I felt like I just said, Happy New Year's. How we reach us already? It's flying. It's flying. All right. So big up on yourself and thank you for being here. I got a lot of yeses uh, helping me out in the comment section. That means you're loud and clear. So flow, carry on Jones. Great goodies, Vanessa Prelis123, Guava876, Kai Tai Jai, Empress, Patsy Barrent, all in the building. Seymour says, Happy birthday, Queen Flow. It's birthday for my princess. All right, make me clear that up. See? All right. I love seeing I love seeing the comment section like this. Because from when they are telling people and say, go get your membership, right? Go get your membership so that we can elevate the amount of money we're giving away. Just that, just that. It's like buying a lotto ticket, man. You buy your lotto ticket, your name is in the draw. You're going to get your money back anyway. Times 10, literally. But we know the supporters, them. Uh, who can get it, can get it. Um, we understand a couple of people are not able to. Like Rash Jada, big up yourself, Rash Jada. We appreciate you greatly. And we understand your circumstances. And there's another brother. And that brother just... Show up and just drop all sixty dollar, and he's like, "So far, I know the um, membership is ten dollars, but here's sixty, here's fifty. Me can't get me something for player. Uh, I can't get my membership for some reason, but you know I support you, regardless. So people like those, I, I don't want to block them out. You know what I mean? But for the the rest of them, them just are riding along and them not really get into the thing like oh, we want to get into the thing. Sometimes you gotta get serious and steer your ship in the right direction. That's just how things go. So. Here we are with it. Uh, Rosalind Smichael says, what does having the yellow or green symbol beside your name mean, SoFlo, or anyone? The yellow or green symbol uh, means how long you've had your membership. It means how long you've had your membership. So different colors for different times. Like if you had it for a month, you'll be one color. If you had it for like two, three months, you've been another color. If you had it the longest, then you'll be another color, that kind of stuff. If you let it lapse and then collapse and you don't, uh, you your membership went away and then you get it back, your color will start over again and all that kind of stuff. So flow is the tropical storm heading your direction. Yes, yes, Ilian. Let me tell you, I got two notifications yesterday, which I feel kind of weird about. I don't know if I should put up my storm shutters or if it's not that serious. I'm gonna talk to me real quick before we get into the topics that we have. Talk to me real quick. The people in South Florida, are we putting up our storm shutters or not? Cause the last tropical storm that passed through took off one of the doors off of the pool house in the back of the house. And the door was out there just flying. It's on halfway and it was beating against the house like it was going to bust out the windows to one of the kids' room in here. And I couldn't go out there and do anything about it. Because, you know, heavy winds and piece of iron are flying out of the air like that back and forth. I'm not going out there. Where well, will I mash up? Go well, and mash up. When it's done, me go out there and fix it. So I don't want to be experiencing that today and have my things them tied down and fix up. See? Put up the shutters, bro. King Biggs, I said, put up the shutters. Elaine Ben says, yes, it's best you do that before even thinking about, oh, man, you know how much work it goes to putting up them damn shutters? Jeez. I got the big old galvanized ones. Kaitai Jai says, better safe than sorry. Ja, ja. Bam. You can't hear me? Uh, if we got to put up them shutters, I'm going to be bummed. May I ask the people them in um, South Florida, may I ask them, or just anybody on here, if they think that we should put up the shutters. Remember I told you we got notification? Last night for storm, uh, tropical storm heading this way. And they said it's supposed to be pretty severe. So I'm wondering if we should put up the shutters. You know, see nobody else I put up for them. But if, 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 why, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you, you know what's the funny thing? In Florida here, we kind of like watch each other in, in the neighborhood. Even when you don't talk to each other, you watch each other. If the neighborhood is putting up their shutters, you put up your shutters. So if they're not putting up their shutters, then you're like, ah, it's all good. Ain't nobody worried about it. And you don't put yours up. The storm come through, blow out everybody's window, blow out all your window. Too. So everybody cry the same time about the same thing. Me don't know. 
I'm feeling some type of way about it. I'm thinking uh Patsy Barrett says Patsy Barrett says I'm not worried about it yet. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. But you, you know, I need to know. I'm gonna stay closer to the news. Anyways, I don't want to get in a no panic mode. I don't want to get in a no panic mode. Vanessa says, don't be a sheep. Do what's best for your family. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got that, Vanessa. I got that. We're wolves. Uh, we're wolves among sheeps. Never a sheep, darling, but yeah. So I go. Anyhow, uh, on the board this morning, my baby turns two. Happy birthday to Milani, my little princess, my joy, my love bug, my sugar, S-U-G-A-H, sugar, that's daddy sugar, I call her my sugar, I, and now I keep calling her, wifey say, why, you know, say so y'all call your daughter Munchi, I actually have a cousin named Munchi, but I was calling my daughter Munchi because my mom said Munchi Punchi. And when she said, Munchy Punchy, you just stuck. And I'm like, come Munchy Punchy, come with sugar. You know, we stay already, right? Your sugar, your, your picnic them have about 20 names. If you're Jamaican or you're Caribbean, your babies probably have about 20 names. As they get older, the names phase out into one or two. And then by the time them get a little bit older, them get stuck with one nickname. Wrong or right? That's a cultural thing, right? You didn't realize that? That's a cultural thing. So... <laughs> so she right now she is punchy muncho and she got to her granny she is um sugar she is uh, um we call her all kind of something but she my sugar right the way she holds me and vibrate her like herself sometimes she holds me and goes like mm, vibrate like this and then she kiss me nothing in the world is worth more than that i don't know how someone take it all one time, man, if you go to prison for all 20 years and leave them like a picnic, left your daughter at like two years old and you get 20 years, 15 years under your skin. I would go crazy just knowing that I can't be out here for her, right? So, man, today's her birthday. She's growing. She's growing beautifully. If she wakes up in time before the show is over, I'll have her come in here just so she can see the screen. Our, you know, our mommy do our hair already, Slade. And she's ready for her birthday. It's going to be a busy day for her. She has all her siblings around, except for the oldest one, uh, Farai. Shout out to my oldest son, Farai. He's in school now. Uh, Farai took up. Uh, what, what Farai study again? He took up uh, cyber. Something with cyber technology. Cyber security. He took up cyber security. So. He won't be here, but all her other siblings are here. So it's always a joy also to have all my children in one place, right? Steve Wright, big up yourself. Thank you, man. I appreciate you so much. Steve Wright says, happy Friday, SoFlo, and everyone. Blessings, blessings, blessings. All right. So all my children will be in one place today, and we'll be able to celebrate the princess solar return. Lap around the sun, whatever you want to call it, or earth strong birthday all that today two years old prime no rotted more like 22 years old I'm not like but hey i love it that way i want her to be spoiled i want her to be privileged i want her to have talk i want her to be saucy and uh even the lesson in this shout out to my caribbean people when you bring your children right up in other lands other parts of the world Yes, they have to assimilate, but you have to make sure that you give them that sauce. See? Cause we, we build different. We have a sauce. We have a sauce. Ain't too many of us that you can like push over easy and run over easy and just say what you want to say and get to with it and yeah, you're gonna get checked. All right. And these kind of things. And we're not too docile when it comes to defending ourselves and standing up for ourselves out in the world. That's the majority of us anyways, unless we want to be for ulterior motives or whatever. So put that in your children. And I'm definitely trying to put all that in my daughters, especially. Yeah, son of a boy, I can't give them no sweet talk. And they're not, oh, he said I was beautiful and pretty and nobody ever tells me that. No, my daughter going to be like, 
this boy, I think me frightened for here. Pretty compliments. Like, my daddy, I tell me that 1,000 times a day from me. Yeah, I'm a knee. I'm not frightened for you, youth. Yeah. Oh, you want to come over to my house? I live in a big, nice house. I live in a big, nice house, too. But we're having a pool party. You can come hang out with me and my boys. I got my own pool. Me and my girls go to my own house. I mean, I want them. I'm trying to create this world in my head. I'm trying to make that world be out here in the world for them. You know what I'm saying? All the things I never had, all these other things. I mean, did have a lot. Even though, no, me, I realized it wasn't really a lot. But it was a lot. I had love. I had love. And I had guidance. And those were the most important things. And I'm going to make sure that they have that. Anyway, enough about that. Happy birthday to my baby. You know I'm going to stay already. If we get talking about the babies or reminiscing about Jamaica life and all this stuff, I'll go on all morning. All right. Avoid Jamaica. U.S. Travel Advisory just released yesterday is telling the u.s government is telling jamaicans to avoid is telling u.s people rather to avoid jamaica at all costs they didn't say don't go to the island they listed eight parishes that is a no-go zone eight if you know nothing about Jamaica, you know that we have 14 parishes. So they basically said more than half of Jamaica don't go there. We're going to get into the details of that in a minute and specifics, what parishes, why, and what Jamaica has to say about, or Jamaican authorities have to say about this. Somebody said we have 15 parishes. Well, they haven't turned Portmore into a parish yet, my friend. Portmore, I'm a place. But they haven't turned Portmore into a parish yet. So 14 parishes we have. Uh, Nina Sky. Nina Sky said 15. Thank you, Seymour, for the happy birthday. And um, are you not concerned? That, okay. I got three. Three ways arguments. Something. I know some people are like, Soflo, don't even pay attention to those people and all these things. You know, sometimes when people say stuff, I have to address it. I have a story here, though. Um, about this man who won the lottery, 10 million US dollars he, he won. And he got life in prison uh, four days ago, sentenced to life in prison after winning the lottery. What did he do to get life in prison after winning the lotto? $10 million, we're gonna talk about it. We're even gonna talk about the breakdown of the money, how much he collected after taxes, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the situation surrounding why he is now going to spend the rest of his life in prison. Also, we're going to do a compare and contrast with that. Because the young lady who boops out the man, rightfully so, I mean, he was giving away stuff. You know, he came with his checkbook on his forehead. Let me pay off all your credit cards. And let me build you a two-bedroom um, house and furnish it out and grill it up and stuff. The pum pum nice. Let me give you everything and then we'll kill the girl. Uh, he got 18 years, right, in Jamaica, and he'll serve a few of those, and then he'll be out. Show you how the U.S. does it. Different. So we're going to look at all that this morning. All right? Avoid Jamaica at all costs. Let's talk about that one. U.S. lists eight parishes that its citizens or permanent residents I know permanent residence is like pretty much like a citizen. You're living here, you're working here, you pay your taxes here. You're pretty much eligible for almost everything, almost everything. So, and this is your home. That's your route to citizenship. So you know what I mean already. People will live here. Let me tell when I say we not to go to Jamaica, we avoid it. Totally agree. It should be Jamaicans avoid in America. Ha! Dirty, dark. I lie. I tell. Listen. I don't know if you saw the news recently, but over Mexico there and the things that Jamaicans are doing to actually make it into the U.S. is crazy. It's crazy. May I read one lady's story and the lady I talked about how they she went that route, like she went through Haiti. She left Jamaica, went through Haiti, went from Haiti to somewhere else into Mexico and then was coming across the border. And after all that... You get catch. I saw a tunnel that they dug, and the tunnel is two miles long under the ground, and them sleep in it. And a man in the tunnel is saying, The oxygen levels are very low in here. 
and you have to like shallow your breathing and him have a, it wasn't ganja it was that what's that leaf for them true them make cocoa tie cocoa leaf and chew the cocoa leaf and him said the cocoa leaf numb him out under there and keep him you know grounded for the time he's under there and in that crowd you have jamaicans in there now I don't know how bad life is in... Well, I do know. I do know. And I've said it before. Some of us had life bad and forget that people had it worse. Some of us had life really good growing up in Jamaica. And we don't understand, sir. We cannot relate. Completely cannot relate to how horrible life is a reality for some there as well. However, me a ton of my yard forever... If that's the way I have to go, first of all, I don't I, I I don't remember ever being claustrophobic until I joined the army. An incident happened where I was in the back of a Bradley, which is a tank, a fighting vehicle. I was an infantry soldier. My, me and my team roll in the back of the Bradley, right? The Bradley takes us to the fight. That flap comes down and we dismount in different directions and do our thing. I got trapped in the back of a Bradley and smoke started coming in in the Bradley. And I remember beating on the Turk door and uh, the sergeant up top, Sergeant Martinez. I said, Sergeant Martinez, you got to let me up out of here. I, I can't. I got to get out. And then my mind started going different places in that particular incident. And ever since then, like my mind was like running a million miles an hour, like stand up. No, sit down, run. No, don't run. You can't run. Um, you okay? No, I'm not okay. Yes, you are okay. Like my mind was just going, 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 going like I was going to go crazy. I said, this, let me out. You could put me on the battlefield with my gun. I will shoot, move, and communicate and save myself from outside. If I die out there, I die out there. But I'm... So ever since that, every time I get on a plane or I get in any closed up area, all that comes back, right? So I, I couldn't see myself. And I don't know if I had this before the military, but I know for sure that's when it became pronounced. Me not going to know two mile long underground, nothing where man dig out. And it's, it's not even reinforced. It's dirt. If that collapse with you in there, you're dead anyways. Not only that, the stories that these women and men are doing it too. But the stories that these women have to go through, because, you know, a man up on the road from day to day to day, not sure if tomorrow is going to come. You must pull your panty to the side and do M1. Do I talk, you going to talk, or I beat them, I'm going to beat you up. So you out there, your body getting slung around, slung around, you get used, you so man, man pimping you on the way, like, I'm in control of her. Oh, you want some? All right, give me an extra hundred then. You got that? All right, go ahead, do your thing. She's going to fight a little bit. She's a bit squirmy. She wild. She's a Jamaican, but you could take it. And th the journey ain't easy. The journey ain't easy. And it's not a group of people who are like united in solidarity. We're going to fight our way to freedom. It's a bunch of vultures that are looking to exploit each other. And whoever makes it to the end is the winner. Is that kind of me a ton of me yard. I will go plant some kalaloo and some dashina and cocoa and try to sell some food on sidewalk or something, but I'm not doing any of that. I'm not doing any of that, but they do. They do. So when you say stuff like, it's Jamaicans that should be avoiding the U.S., nah, I don't really see it that way. But hey, we have our different views. So, listen, the United States on Tuesday, May 31st, in a Level 3 travel advisory, urged Americans to reconsider. You got your tickets booked? Please reconsider, is what it says. Reconsider visiting Jamaica right now. And they list eight of the country's 14 parishes that are at increased risk due to crime and violence. Men don't know so much about the crime, but violence is a crime, depending on how violence is used. See? So I know there's a lot of killing going on, and I'm surprised that people ain't really paying attention to it. Like, you never hear Americans go to Jamaica and come back and say, man, that's a beautiful island. I just wish so much killing wasn't there. They care zero. They come. They talk about how nice it is, the food nice, the beach nice, the this nice, the that nice. 
and the sunshine and the this and the reggae music and they leave and they go back again and they go back again. So they're not, it is Jamaicans that are terrified, but we're going to get into that. In fact, with the advisory being issued just ahead of the summer travel season, this is where tickets spike. This is where everybody is on the go now. School's out, summer vacation, people can take their trips. You know what I'm saying? This is it. The, uh, in fact, with the advisory being issued just ahead of the summer travel season, the U.S. has singled out the popular resort town of Montego Bay in St. James as an area to avoid at all costs. Now, we all know Norman Manley International Airport, Donald Sangster International Airport are our two main airports. If you don't have some money and you're not coming in private jet style, then Ian Fleming is not for you, right? All right. Norman Manley, Donald Sangster. In Montego Bay, that is prime tourist entrance exit. The U.S. issues a travel order and tells Americans to avoid that place at all costs. You have to take into consideration the pandemic just happened. The place did lock down for two years. People weren't making a lot of money. They were getting starved out. People who worked in the industry weren't able to pay their bills, feed their family. They were living paycheck to paycheck from the beginning anyways, so on and so forth. And just as we're about to get ourselves back on our feet, right? Yes, we're looking forward to this. It's the peak travel season now. Boom. Hey, avoid Montego Bay at all costs. I want to blame the U.S., but I can't because Jamaica did this to themselves, right? They did this to themselves. This is failure to control the mess that you have going on. Failure to control the mess that we have going on now has your, and believe it or not, you might say, so who needs the U.S.? Canada, come here. England, come here. We'll get into the numbers because the U.S. is largely, I mean, Jamaica is largely dependent up on the U.S. as far as their tourism industry goes, believe it or not. Yeah, we get people from other places in the world, but it's the U.S. that majority of them come from, right? So when they start telling the citizens, hey, avoid Montego Bay at all costs, I'm guaranteeing you that majority of those citizens are not saying, all right, well, we'll just go to Kingston then. We'll just jump off at um, Donna Sangster. Or we'll just jump off at Norman Manley International. No, they're not going to Kingston. Kingston is not seen as a tourist area for them, right? All right, the parishes, the Americans are told not to travel to my place first, Pandelis, Clarendon. Beautiful, beautiful Clarendon has turned into no-go zone. Don't go there. I'll tell you something, though. Last time I went to Jamaica, right? Well, a time before, no, a time before that. Well, one of them time that we leave Port Mora, we are drive through, we are go up, go check my grandmother, bless our soul, and we reach Clarendon, reach out to the bus park, and customary, stop and get some patty and them thing, there's some juicy beef and thing. And I saw more white people backpacking tourists traveling alone than anything else. And I'd never seen that many of them before in that area. They're exploring the island. So these travel advisories to some of them, them, they they themselves don't listen to it. And there's a reason. The reason they don't listen to it is because the number of them that have gotten into difficulties as far as being hurt is a really, really, really small number. Really, really small number. They put Clarendon number one on the list, my friend. Clarendon is number one on the list. Hanover is number two on the list. Brent, BM, Kingston is on the list. So again, you have, they, they just told the people to avoid St. James, to avoid Montego Bay at all costs. All right, now they say Kingston. Those are where our two airports are located. So where are they supposed to even come into the country? Watch the mathematics, you know. St. Andrew, St. Andrew in here. St. Anne. In here, St. Anne, I just came back from St. Anne. St. Anne was so peaceful and so quiet and so, but hey, St. Anne, 
St. Catherine is in here. St. James is in here, of course. Moby and St. James and then place that. West Milan is in here. Somebody said, Soflo, you think there's an agenda like to steer all the money into the resorts? Because the resort's been starving for two years. You know, and right now they're trying to figure out there, there's a boom. There's a boom in Jamaica. Airbnb is killing resorts. I'll be the first to say it. Airbnb is killing resorts. Okay. Um, that's not something good to say because somebody now might be like, whoo, he said it. So everybody knows. Airbnb is killing resorts. The, the, the tourists want to experience a more authentic Jamaica. And they notice. I heard one tourist say, if I wanted to be around Americans, I would stay in America. I wouldn't come here. You know, we have nice hotels and a tropical setting in places like Florida and other states in the U.S. So I don't want to come here and be surrounded by foreigners when I come to Jamaica. I want to be surrounded by Jamaicans. I want Jamaican food cooked by Jamaicans. I want to be in Jamaica space, like out in the open Sleep with them, sleep. Kind of, that is why the Airbnb stuff in Jamaica is booming. There are a lot of people in Jamaica right now who even in far remote places could turn their stuff, their house into an Airbnb and make a good income out of it. And I saw where the fight started coming in. Like, okay, we got to find a way to stop this or we have to find a way to slow them down from going to these Airbnbs and stuff and funnel the money this way. Because if the money ain't coming, you can imagine plain land full of tourists and the bus them empty when the bus is supposed to pick up people to take them back to their safe, all-inclusive. That's what an all-inclusive is. Everything is included there. They won't spend no money with you on the local economy. They don't want to buy nothing from you on the, because everything is here. And then if you scare them, they'll definitely stay in an all-inclusive. It's the safest place for me to stay. I'm good right here. Right here, I could enjoy the beach. We could go skiing, snorkeling, swimming. They'll take us out on an excursion every now and then, which is secured. We'll be locked in the bus. And we'll drive past and wave to the locals, but they'll bring us back safely into this compound where it's secured 24-7 and all that. So if you scare them like that and then them are telling, the U.S. is telling them, don't go here, don't go there, don't go there, don't go here, don't go here, don't go here, don't go here, and don't go here. They said it just like that. It's eight times. Don't go here, don't go here, don't go here, don't go there. Don't go here, don't go here, don't go here, and don't go here. That sounds like someplace I should never go. If you said don't go here, 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 and here that many times, me no go. I'm booking tickets for somewhere else. Or I'm looking for the safest way to go there. All inclusive. I kind of see the point. I kind of see the point. And a lot of these people are invested, you know, like their American counterparts are invested in the economy as far as the tourism, the big hotel them. I know we build up them big hotel there. We never have the money to build them something, them multi-billion dollar structures, hundreds of millions of US dollars invested. You think people don't want a return on their investment? You're frigging up their investment with your little Airbnb. I thought, well, come over here, come make a cook for a wood fire and make me give you authentic Jamaica and carry a good on a river where nobody no go and these things. But that's what they want to experience though. So it's a battle going on. Thinking outside the box, it's a battle going on to who gets the money. Kind of makes me see the reality of why the hell had they not fixed up Kingston? Kingston is the capital. You should be showing off your capital, right? When people land there, they should be like, oh, I stayed in the capital. It was, why were you sending them to Moby and Dungwish by all and the hotel them there, mostly? Why are you not investing in places like, remember we talked about this recently? Why you not invest in at the beach them out of Portmore, that's all. Helsha Beach, a historical meeting spot. I think Helsha Beach was the first beach in Jamaica that actually put up restaurants on the beach. Local entrepreneurs. You can get your fish them fry right castle from right out of Dawata. You can get your, your food, everything right here, fry festival and this. Helsha always been festive. It's scary to go over there if you don't know nobody over there. And <laughs> <laughs> as you're driving a hell shot, you're like, yo, come back, come back, come back, it, it could be, and they're very aggressive. 
right? And then I've seen people go and just hurry up and no, some I go somewhere else. Let's go down to the north coast because we don't know nobody over here. See? Uh, Fallon Carrington says, you'll do several more chats on this topic. Yeah, I want to see where it's going. But they have just said that avoid Clarendon, avoid Hanover, avoid Kingston, avoid St. Andrew, avoid St. Anne, avoid St. Catherine, avoid St. James, avoid Westmoreland. Now, you have to remember that also all these places, like for instance, we go to Westmoreland, right? The wife is from West. Westmoreland is huge. Although it might be small, they're telling people to avoid whole parishes. There are places in these parishes that don't know nothing about violence, believe it or not. And yet still people are being told to avoid it. But I'm not going to go against their advisory. I'm just putting it out there and then I'm countering as a Jamaican who did the on a regular basis. Can't say all right, so violent crimes. Violent crimes is the main reason. Violent crimes are the, is the main reason, such as, home, they said, home invasions, armed robberies, sexual assaults, and homicides are common. Sexual assaults occur frequently, including, I'm reading from over here, sexual assaults occur frequently including at the all-inclusive resorts, the advisory said. So, and then it added, local police actually lack the resources to respond effectively to serious criminal incidents. So in other words, if you go, you are on your own. All right? The level three travel advisory also stated that emergency services are weary throughout the island and response time may vary from U.S. standards. Okay, I can tell you right now, if you're in some part, if you're in some parts of Jamaica, let me keep it English and not so much Patois because anybody who can speak Patois already knows this, right? If you're in certain parts of Jamaica and you get in trouble, it's going to be a while before police come. It's going to be a while before ambulance reach you. That's not a lie. That's true. It's in the advisory, and I'm not mad about it. These are some of the things that I've said that we need to fix up in Jamaica without knowing that we were so short-staffed on, say, police, for instance. I've been to a, quite a few places. Police station closed 7 o'clock at evening. Uh, six o'clock at evening and police station don't open again till tomorrow so anything happened throughout the night you on your own till the morning right the, and, and most of the people who are going there are coming from like the u.s where police is available 24 7 you have police that work night shift you have police that work day shift and anything happening at your house you can actually call police right now and get police right now and police will be at your house right now not in jamaica it's not like that right people need to know that stuff it's true those are things that we can fix right um let's see them said that the level three travel advisory also stated that emergency services okay so that too i was there one of the times i was there i did a vlog on it when my, my car broke down the road was so bad on one side we were going through holland bamboo and I hit a piece of asphalt and it ripped the tire. When it ripped the tire, I had to pull over to change. Curfew was going on. I couldn't get back to the hotel unless I change up the tire quick and everything like that. So where's the spare? Okay, and I'm trying to reach. And I called the rental car company and the rental car company said, where are you? And I told them where I was at. And the lady said something about 7 to 14 hours because ah, 7 14 hours because you're way out there and i'm like all right i think i know how to change my own tire so i'm gonna jack up the car change the tire and get back but if you're one of them people that we can't change your own tire you want to go see the island and all that and you're thinking rescue will be there i'll just call the rental car company they'll come get me you could be out there on the road for 7 to 14 hours on the side of the road 
right? And don't be out there waving at everybody and looking like, hi, I'm a tourist. I have all my bank cards on me and passport, and I probably have some foreign dollars. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Don't do any of that. See, just a travel, my own travel advisory. Hurry up, do what you got to do. Get out of Dodge. If I brought a daylight, you're good still. See, Jamaican people are more helpful than anything else. I would say that more of them want to help you than actually want to rob you. But if you make yourself a victim, like make yourself known in a certain way, then it could turn the other way around on you. Um, them talk about that. They said that the homicide rate that was reported by the government of Jamaica for several years has been amongst the highest in the Western Hemisphere. Well, we know that. We already know that, but what we are going to do about it? Seeing the advisory the, amongst the highest in the Western Hemisphere. Look at us just parading our ass to the world in the worst way possible. You know, the, advice, the advisory also provided a breakdown of areas in the eight parishes that U.S. government personnel are prohibited. Prohibited. This is not go if you want to. This is prohibited. Should not forbidden to go. They are prohibited from traveling to. Adding that if they are also adding that they are also prohibited from using public buses and from driving outside of these prescribed areas of Kingston at night. The, yo, that travel advisory advisory here make it play sound scary and rotted enough. Among the tips provided by U.S. citizens who decided to travel to Jamaica are one: walk with the people. Avoid, 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 you know, you take the boy out of the country. I can't take the country out of the boy. I went to say avoid and avoid come out. So <laughs> avoid, they say avoid walking or driving at night. I do that here in the U.S. That's <laughs> worse. I'm going to be in a strange country. Uh, when may I do walking and driving at night in a strange country? I make day movements. Nighttime, keep on me yard, keep on me kin, keep I'm I'm somewhere safe at night, okay? I'm somewhere safe at night. Not in my younger days. In my younger days, you know, when you're young, 20s, and you're just out there in a business, you feel like you're going to live forever, so you go out to party whole night, right? Gunshot bus, and you run, go out on next party, and it was like, ah, oh, they're shoot up over this one or nothing. Now that you're, you have children that depend on you and all these things, you feel like you have to preserve yourself a little longer. So now it's like, them are doing over where? Yeah, man, you know, have a good time. I'll see you later, all right? I'm a god. Me come check you later, yeah. Like that. Or just pass through and go about my business kind of thing. So, avoid walking or driving at night. Okay. Avoid public buses. I don't know. Avoid, what, what, what do I have to say about that one? Avoid public buses. Avoid public buses is kind of like saying... Hey, big up to big up to the, let, me tell, let me tell you when you meet real Jamaicans, right? Who really close. If you live in Miami and you travel to Jamaica a lot, you will see like man just put on like me a fly out today. Man show up at the airport to that nothing. Got some shots, cut off shots, slippers, and a marina. That's it. Passport in my back pocket. No, no, no carry on bag, no nothing. And just go through the airport just like that. When them reach at the airport, them jump on a bus, go out of my yard, gone. And that's it. Right? And, and you see them and you're like, man, I want to be like that. Well, I could see how the tourists be looking at them like, I want to be like that. I want to be able to do that in Jamaica too. You know? But yeah, they say avoid public buses. I don't know. You couldn't make yourself a victim, I guess on public buses because if you take a public transportation more than likely or among locals more than normally i see people down there taking public buses that are tourists but they're saying to avoid the public buses avoid secluded places or situations listen if you need somebody to tell you that i think you need to not travel don't do no international traveling if you need somebody to tell you, don't go into dark corners in strange countries and stuff like that. See? But those are the things that are on the travel advisory. 
avoid secluded places or situations. <laughs> so Carrie Ann says, no white girl on a minibus. I like, we see white girl them on the bus, on the JUTC bus them. Then pack them bag. They travel in groups, some small groups, some large group. They stay at hostels. Hostels are, for the, those of you who don't know, it's like you take a house and you rent out the house and the house have three rooms in it. But each room has like three bunk bed in there. So you can have like six, eight people sleep in that room and them charge each one of them 60, 70, 80 US dollar a night to stay in there. And they travel like that. They come from all parts of Europe and the US as well. It's mainly for backpackers of all age range and those who are free spirited and like hippies and like the, the universe will guide me. I'm going into jungle and Rima today. I'm feeling lucky. Hope I can meet a Rasta man. And you know, them go to the, them go to that world like that. And they're usually good. Nobody, nobody of them for real. Enough of them actually go, they go get a Rasta man for real. A young star ass. Not the Rasta them did not look for them. They look for highly Selassie I type of Rasta. Holy money will I and peace and love. And now them get a Rasta away. Yo, dog. You saw me, I say. Come here, girl. And them kind of thing. But it, it work out for them. They usually end up safe. See? Do not physically resist any robbery attempt. If they put the gun on you or the knife on you and say, give it up, give it up. When them are rob your fake goods or pum pum or whatever, just give it up. Don't resist. Don't fight. You might lose your life. That's on the travel advisory. I'm, I'm reading through the travel advisory. All right. The last one on there is be aware. Be aware of your surroundings and keep a low profile. Again, if people need to tell you to not go to dark, secluded corners in strange countries, and if people need to tell you to be aware of your surroundings when you're in a different country than where you live, your yard, then you don't need to be traveling overseas. Yeah? But that's what's on the travel advisory. I like the part where it says keep a low profile, though. Why? Because Americans are usually loud. They are. When they go to other places, people know that they're there. You know, people know that the Americans are here. They're loud. So the mafia tell them to keep a low profile. Don't go out there letting everybody know with your loud accent. Yeah, I just came in last night. Now, what time your flight came in? I got off my flight at like 7 a.m. What, your flight came in? Oh, so we were, damn, we were almost on the same flight. Yeah, when you going back? Where you staying at? Oh, you at Rio? Nah, I don't like Rio. I stayed there last year. Today I'm at, um, uh, everybody did their pre, you're like, all right, so them stay at so-and-so. Okay. Expensive over there. Them have money. Mm -hmm. Come in last night. So they must stay for about a week. All right. You give yourself away when you do stuff like that. So keep a low profile. And some of the Jamaican like to do that too when you go a foreign. Change, when you go to Jamaica, change up your accent and go on like you, you, you were born and raised in the U.S. And you're a foreigner. I move around like foreigner. Them things that will get you in trouble. All right. When I go to Jamaica, I'm as Jamaican as it gets. I'm mean, going to dress up in a no fancy way. Everybody I meet dress better than me and all these things. I'm a talk and move like a local. See, you might not be able to do that if you have assimilated so far into foreign culture that you can't do that. But I think that is also more respected than anything else. You know, I have a, I have a particular lady that I go to every time I go west. I go over our shop to buy some things and things. And the way I'm like, look and run cross and step out into the road and thing and walk. Like she's like, she, she always says stuff like, "A foreign you living or I know you say you come from or I know you say it like be careful how you cross the road before them bounce you down here and these kind of things." When you come in, Mister Marie, last night, man, she said, "All right then, so everything good." Me say, "Yeah, everything good." And give, give me two of them chubby there and two this and two that and one of that and one of that and blah blah blah. Go about my business. I'm not there trying to peel off American dollars and then, oh, these are American dollars and put it over here. Let me go for my Jamaican dollars pocket over here and put, you will get yourself in some serious trouble. 
All right? Them, them a twang. Carrie Ann Jordan said, them a twang. Yeah, where you staying at? Yeah, I just got off the plane last night. Yeah, my, my flight came in at 7. What time your flight came in? Oh, damn, we were almost on the same flight, fam. All right, so bet. Where you at? Rio? All right, bet. Yeah, with them twanging. Go on. And uh, Jamaica and them, you know? Because when them done do all that now, you hear them round the back. So, you want to go KFC? Want to want feet? No, I don't want none of that. You're like, why are you using that other accent then? Do you know where you're at? So, when you go home, be home. Okay? When you're among your people, be among your people because you must understand one thing. Vultures are lurking. And in a matter of nothing about poverty, vultures are lurking. That's anywhere you go. Vultures are lurking. You over there talking, just making yourself known. All that says to somebody who want to rob your heart it is, yeah, them a foreigner. Them a Jamaican, but them they are foreign long time. See, so more than likely, them tourists, them are coming in for like a little few days and fly out again. So we have to rob them before them left. That kind of something that, that's all it said to them. When them see me, them don't know. When me reach, them don't know. When me a left, them don't know nothing. Then why I'm not knowing that brother look cross and angry and miserable still. And him look like same there all the time. So let me look for your next victim. Yeah, man, me here, me talk to him and everything. Yeah, I'm kind of rough around the edges too. Oh, man, no cut, no shave, no nothing. Me I them look miserable. Unless you talk to me nice, then me I them light up and me talk back to you nice. So yeah, but my mash road like mad people. Yeah, and you you have to keep that about yourself. I'm just trying to tell y'all how to survive out there. I'm just trying to tell you how to survive. You know what I'm saying? All right. Found Carrington says the metal that had been tried seven times. The metal that had been tried meant the metal that had been tried seven times in the furnace, and the metal is now ready for the hand by design. See him full of ganja smoke and red. D Mark, see that man. Hey, cha cha. But I, hey, me under my meds, and I'm telling you right now, yes, me and Ganja is friend when I'm in Jamaica. Me and Ganja is friend. If anything happened, it happened while I was flying, hiding. Didn't really care too much about it. May I live my life? I don't go there to be stressed out. I don't go there thinking the American Travel Advisory said must. Please pull out the phone, be able to see which eighth place we shouldn't go. Oh, shit, we're going to this place. Turn the car that way. Then if we go our next place. Oh, God, we're ending up in this place. I don't do that. And I don't know anybody that does that. So the information is out here for you. Just letting you know. It don't look good for we, though. Because according to Jamaica is a safe destination, these are what the response from the bigger heads are saying. Jamaica is still a safe destination despite u.s travel advisory despite the latest u.s level three travel advisory shout out to the jamaica loop news for this despite the latest u.s travel advisory urging americans to reconsider visiting jamaica and listing eight of our country's 14 parishes as areas to avoid a key tourism stakeholder says that Jamaica has a track record of being one of the safest destinations for tourists, right? The tourism player who says, um, I'm not authorized to speak on this matter, so please hide my ID. Don't say I me say it. Also said this, less than 1% of the visitors who come here have had any infractions against them. Less than 1% percent let that be known okay so whereas we recognize that advisories are made from time to time in the interest of the destination that made them we have to continue to strive to make our destination top of mind to our visitors first thing that comes to their mind when they think of a vacation hey let's go on a vacation where are we going jamaica we want to be the first one in their mind right and to increase even our or repeat business from the 42 to 50 percent to 60 percent this tourism stakeholder said now besides jamaica's recorded 42 percent repeat visitors that means 42 percent of who's been to jamaica before goes back again 
and goes back again and goes back again. The stakeholder argued that the American market accounts, again, this is where I'm telling you we're going to get to the numbers because some people are saying, fuck America, we don't I want to them. We don't, we don't need them for come here. Jamaica's tourism market accounts for the U.S. accounts for over 80% of the overall arrivals. Yeah. So while you're throwing your two middle fingers up and you're saying, the U.S. are, the U.S. are never killed. 80%. 80%. You think you really want to say, the U.S. 80%? You don't. So it's a game now where we have to play diplomatic. You understand? We're not saying nothing bad about the U.S. We're just saying. <laughs> now, in the travel advisor issued on uh, May 31st, just ahead of the summer travel season, the U.S. urged citizens to reconsider. If you got your ticket already, please reconsider traveling to Jamaica and to avoid these places which we went over. There were statistics released by the Jamaica Constabulary Force last Monday revealed that murders are up by 6.5% nationally. There were 574 murders that were recorded as of May 23rd. Today, today is June 7th. As of May 23rd, January, February, March, April, and May. The 23rd of May is not the whole month of May. So in the 1st, January, February, March, April, and a couple months out of May. So you could say in the four, first four and a half, first four and three-fourths month of the year, we already are at 574 murders. Honestly, if you tell me that, hey, Soflo, you say, yeah, go to Chewbacca, right? All right. Just a little FYI for you. Over Chewbacca, in our last four and a half months, uh, almost 600 people get murdered over the crops. Don't need to tell me twice. I won't be going. Gone by my business. It's a scary thing to think about that. Allow me to tell? It's a scary thing to think about that. 574 as of May 23rd. And let's not be too bad and harsh on Jamaica, but... We know saying not all of the numbers, them that we come in. See? Somebody says, oh, wait, wait, Seymour Bennett says, even with the advisory, they say that the hotel, them, still full. See there? Hotel still full. Plane still full. Tourists start venture out. Tourists are still going to other places, leaving these all-inclusives and venturing out because they want to see the real Jamaica. If I went to... Like, if I went to Barbados, if I went to Grenada, if I went to Antigua and Barbuda, if I went to, if I never call your island, big up your island, if I went to Dominica, if I went to any other place, I don't want to stay in no all-inclusive. I want to go outside. I want to talk to the locals. I want a man chop a cold jelly for me on the side of the road. Or around. I want one of them um, look a bar there. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk to the locals. I want to test out the local strain. I want to, these kind of things. I don't want to be locked up in a, a, a all inclusive, surrounded by people that talk like this. Like, yo, what's up? Yo, you all, it's all good, son. Yeah, man, we having a whole lot of fun. Yo, when you going back? Yeah, I don't want to hear that. If I wanted to hear that, like that tourist said, I would have stayed in the US, right? So, I mean, it's a battle for the dollars. I understand the struggle on both sides because these people invested a lot of money into the tourism industry, building up these. And Jamaica have some rotted hotel in up. Them have some nice, fancy hotel in up. I'll swim up to your balcony and all these things. If you can't afford it, you should go try it. That may I try to tell you. And they want a return. Nobody goes into business to lose. They want a return on their investment. So if the people are going another way, they have to design a way to bring them back another way. On the flip side of that, the murder numbers in Jamaica are very real. The fear that people feel are very real or is very real. However, 
it is more local Jamaicans that are afraid than it is tourists. Tourists don't really fear nothing. Because them know that nobody not do nothing to them. And they pretty much know that once somebody does something to one of them, it's usually solved with the quickness. You know? It's like somebody in the back saying, I don't, yo, I don't know if any of you ever live on like a street where drugs sell on these things. So I'm going to draw from my past right now. If you hot up the area around your dog, nobody can make no money because police are corral the place and all these things. So you see, tourists don't touch them. You see me? That kind of stuff. And as soon as somebody touch one, you give his ass up. Make them go on with him so the place free up again so we can go back to getting our bread. That kind of stuff. See? And, and, and tourists are well aware of that. Them walk anywhere. Missing them at Jamaica, ride them like a bicycle by themselves. Shirt off, man in a pum pum shorts, just pedaling along like. It's... And then we have you done know, everything on. And, and they're not scared. They're not afraid because they know this. Dana Casada, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Dana Casada says, Happy birthday, princess, to my beautiful princess. Malani, baby, can bring me baby, you know, let me show her off our birthday. If you can hear me, probably can't hear me. Yeah, hear me? Yeah, so listen, with all that travel advisory stuff and everything like that, um, I'm still booking my ticket and I'm playing, <laughs> but I'm a local. I'm still booking my, them tell me, say me I'm a local, them tell me, say me a tourist, me get Bex. My cousin I talk about no cause you are you're you are you are tourists to them. Yeah, yo, my spirit get bringle like oh would you believe you are called tourists boy. It, but like yeah, that's how they see it, you know. Oh mommy, oh mommy. Grandpa hurt me. Yeah, you want put mm. Baby, I want like a piece of shots, and I wasn't sure if she wanted to put all that on camera because it was there. But hi, Munchi. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Milani. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Yay! You want mommy? Ooh. Want to get our beer? Balloon. 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 I love you. Daddy soon come here. It's on pop. She has a bubble for her hair. Bye bye. Bye bye, princess. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Miss Seth. Oh, melts my heart. Two daughters me have enough. Me don't know how man have them daughter and turn their head the next way and make no sir. Mm -mm. Me two daughter them. I love my sons to death. But my daughters, I go ape shit crazy. My daughters. All right. Don't send nothing out the way. Don't. If you're going to give me advice, please try to give me advice in measured ways. Be careful what you say, how you say it kind of stuff. I'm okay with all that constructive criticism and all that. But you know what I'm saying? Certain things are off limits. My two daughters are way off limits for everything. No game, no nothing. No joke, no nothing. Those are off limits. Period. So that's my baby. And we're about to turn up for her birthday, family style. Right? All right. This other story now. So enough of the Jamaica and travel advisory and stuff. Who in here is booking their tickets for the year? I'm definitely going to be in Jamaica soon. Me can't tell anybody that. No no travel advisory, nothing can stop me from being there. And the thing about that is, because I'm a place. I'm a place. See? Big up to each and every one of you wishing her happy birthday, man. I appreciate it greatly. Right? You actually, if you've been around long enough, you watch my other babies grow up. So she's the newest addition, you know? Patty Barrett, thank you so much. I appreciate you. She says, for the birthday, girl, happy birthday, Milani. Thank you. I appreciate you greatly, right? So y'all have witnessed these babies grow up. Kosi is now, if you started with this channel, Kosi was six when we started. He's ju He just turned 14. 
He's now six foot, six feet, three inches tall and wearing size 15 man shoes. And y'all seen him from, he was like, yay high. Seeing Jaden is the same thing. Farai is the same thing. Y'all watch all my kids grow up and stuff. So this, this ain't nothing that we make up what we do. This is something that we live, what we do. You don't believe me? Check my videos. Track record. It's there to prove. My baby's always been around me, and it's always going to be that way, right? And before I'm going to my next topic, I just want to say again, again, Daddy, you're very important. You're very important. And just be there. You know what I'm saying? No excuses. Just be there. Let me say it again. No excuses. Just be there. That's it. All right. I remember I was taking a lot of contracts and stuff. Shout out to my mom. My family is like built a kind of different way. Short story real quick. I was taking a lot of contracts and stuff. My mother gets serious. She was like, she becks. So like, your bids, you're gone, leave the picking them on all this. I said, mommy, I'm working. You know, and I have to travel for work. And she's like, no, find something local to do. Because the kids, them need you. They're growing up fast and they need you now. And I'm like, in my mind, because I couldn't say it in not real life, no matter how big my feel me is. I was like, this blood clock, man, come out of my business, man. It, it, because, you know, your mother gets you perturbed sometimes, but you dare not disrespect her. So I'm cussing her out in my mind, like, I, I have to work. I have to travel for work, right? But then when I'm by myself, I still look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, you know, Sasha talks sense. She's talking truth because every time you come home, they're doing a whole bunch of different things and they're starting distance from you like they don't really know you like that. I just said, nope, got to get off the road for a minute. Plus, Shakira, she already made it from day one. She was like, I'm not having any kids unless we're going to have a stable home for them and this and that. And me, me love traveling. So I wasn't ready for no stable home, but I was. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't ready to be like in one place kind of thing. And she's like, if that's what we're going to do, we have to be like, I don't want the babies moving around, moving around and all that. So we, we, we anchored down and this is where it's at. See? All right. With that said, I was going to tell you a story about how I took Shakira Sphere out of a strip club. This story should be about 10 minutes long. So... Y'all heard rumors before, right, that I used to do stripping. I was a stripper, see? And um, it was during that time that I met her. She used to strip at a club that's right next to the club that I used to strip at. So, I don't know, I know, people are going to judge you. Yeah, 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 strip, whatever. I and, and the first time I saw her was seven years ago. And I said to her, I said, you're too beautiful to be doing all this. Like, you, sh you what you doing over there? And she was like, I'm doing what you're doing over there. I seen you. I seen you dance. So I said to her, how about I take you out of this club and put you in the house? She was like, I don't want to be nobody's housewife. I said, you don't have to be my housewife, but I don't want you in a club stripping. You look too good for this, right? And after talking to her for a long while, I'm like, yo, her soul was genuine. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I feel like you would be a good match for me, but my woman can't be stripping. And she was like, but you're doing it. I said, let me do it for a little while and then I'll quit. Get some money together, get us up out of here. Right. And, but what Peking said? Jane Anders says, are you for real? I never believe the rumor. Oh, my God. Katai Jai Emperor says she never believed the rumor. <laughs> really? So love the real. April Fool's gone long, long. <laughs> Listen. People in. I got mint in my cup this morning. Just mint tea. All right. So. We this weekend, this week gone that we were off, didn't do any vlogs for a couple of days. We were out enjoying the festivities in Miami and 
Fort Lauderdale area. And that marked our seventh year together. See? That marked our seventh year together. There was a lot of people that said in the beginning, oh, no, no, I'm going to make it. I can't wait for the girl left you. And they used to say stuff to her too. And they still say stuff to this day. I had a comment yesterday on the channel that says, oh, we have been together for seven years. Yeah, me sure. So she give you a bun. And I can prove it and all this. I want to tell people that I'm not the kind of person that sit around worried about who give who bun and all that. I'm so sure of myself that I'm not overly cocky, but I'm confident in what who I am and what I bring to the table. So if I'm the kind of person that you want to give bun, then I'm not losing anything. I, I, my ducks are lined up. My head is on straight. So you would be losing a lot if you decide to say, you are give me bun. Because eventually, all things done in dark come to light, right? And then you lose out. All I look at it as is a new door open for me to get with somebody that's loyal. So I'm not worried. So all that man, then we are talking about, oh, yo, she, she a gay about her, all this. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about when me put on strapping span that me satisfied and she good. So it's all good. I'm not worried about none of that. Then somebody else says, uh, oh, yeah, are you concerned that she's giving you bun? No, I'm not. One boy say him can't prove it. I don't care. Me no business. You know, people get on the internet, and these are grown people that get on the internet and say all kinds of stuff. Me no one know wait for the strip club story, how we met and how I took her out of the club. I'm going to finish that up in a minute. The next one, somebody said, be careful. Man will take her away from you. I'm going to tell them, Sashifa, be careful too, because woman will take me away from her too. We're not out here like that. No tree not growing our forehead. We're out no smell bad. You know what I'm saying? We're hygiene up and everything like that. So, <laughs> ah, so we're we're not worried. Oh man, I gotta take her from me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Uh, yo, my wife is so sexy right now, especially since she she's always been sexy. But especially since she's been hitting the gym from remember I know it was our New Year's resolution. So this is months in. January, February, March, April, May. Now we're in June, six months in now, hitting the gym hard. Her whole body has changed. Can I go show her off, yes? Wait till you see the vlogs. Stick, watch her channel, but watch mine too when me drop the vlog from Miami. Because I got them outfit there, what she did have on. At first, when she put them on, I was like, if she don't make a sim, when she put them on. And then the little insecure dude creeps up and he's like, you sure you want everybody to see her or something like that? And then me, I'm over here like, Hell yeah. I've always been like that. Oxar, I've always been like that. Y'all be able to put on something nice, snuck out tonight. I mean, I show you off on them something there. And me, I know the type for be like, don't look on me, woman. Me don't want nobody to look on you. Dress now on burka, cover up your head. Me, why you body I show so much? This is I'm not that kind of guy. So if you ask me, be careful, man, we take her away from you. Me, out there, I look good too. Woman, we take me away too. God, some of them want to take me away too. We're not afraid of none of that though. And the next person, now the last one, I can tell that your house is decorated. I can tell by the way your house is decorated that you've been broke for a long time and you just came into a little bit of money. Congratulations to you, but you look like somebody that's always budgeting. Grown people talk to you like this. That's why you must understand when you see people move a certain way. Why? Because you don't know who is coming to you with that weird shit, right? Okay. I don't have to explain nothing to nobody. We're not short on no furniture. We're raising children. Children who I don't want them to be raised like me. If you drop something and it broke, or it costs so much money and them want to beat you for it, right? I want my house to be their playground. That's their house. Where they live should be their comfort zone. And my kids are like that and we're like that. We go away, we get nice places to stay, and even in the nice places, we're both like, okay, I'm ready to go home. If we have a pool, which part we stay, we're like, uh, my pool at home is cleaner than this. My pump works. This pump ain't working. My, like, you ready to go home already. So we good. We good. And don't worry about furnishing uh, all these things. We have good furniture in here and enough to satisfy the whole family. So we don't need to live like how you want us to live, sir, or mom, sir. Because it's only a mom, sir, would I go that route. And it's a man that said all that. I can't fix myself as a man 
to say, <laughs> I can't fix myself as a man to say certain things. Big, tough man, you know, get up, go up on internet to say certain things. How do you do it? Because I can't do it. That's a mom, sir. I cannot do it. Oh, your house and your house. I could, I could picture him in my head. And your house, not decorated, uh, good. And I can't tell, say, yeah, somebody will never they really have enough money. And you just come in to lick a bit of money. So, uh, congratulations to you, sir. But you look like you're always budgeting. I have six pick me have. Of course, I'm always budgeting. Material thing don't mean nothing to me. Their happiness means something to me. And when them said, daddy, I need this. And this needs to be taken care of, and that needs to be taken care of. Ask them if me ever itch. Never. Right? So none of that now <laughs> none of that now kill me. Me no over here beg nobody now, boy. Please help me take care of my children. I had too much. I can't mind them. Uh -uh, all that. Well, good man. I'm always budgeting, and I encourage people to always be budgeting. So fun fact, and then we're gonna get into this millionaire man we're going to prison. Fun fact, I told my son yes, uh, day before yesterday, it was all the kids in, riding in the car. And I said, you know how rich people get uh, get rich? They're like, no. I said, by pretending that they're broke. Yeah, living like they're broke. And you know how broke people stay broke? And they go, by pretending they're rich? I said, yes, bingo, by pretending they're rich. Pretending they're rich to impress a whole bunch of other people who either are broke or don't really give a damn about you anyways, right? And you're going to remain broke trying to keep up that facade. I live in real time. When you meet me out the road, you see me. See I'm person, yes, sir. Me not in a no facade. I don't have no facade to keep up. None of that. I'm always budgeting, and that's okay. That's how I am. Call me, call me cheap, call me this, call me that, whatever. When the important things, though, need to be paid for, I got it. All right. That's what's important. Now, with that said, back to the strip club thing. So I met her stripping. She was stripping next to the club that I was stripping at. And I took her out to the strip club. I told her, I don't want you doing this. I want you to be my wife. I think feel like you could be somebody good to somebody and it could go somewhere, right? And then she, let me stop the foolishness. She, <laughs> I didn't meet my wife in no strip club. Oh, I see how much people are going to jump on it. Big up the people them who are like, I don't believe that. You never meet Brandon in no strip club. So if you stop lying. Now, uh, let me clear it up once and for all again. I never stripped and I never met my wife in no strip club. See? <laughs> never stripped and never met her in no strip club. But yesterday I said to her, I said, babe, you know, so I'm going to tell them, say, I'm going to write it down on the board, right? That's all. And I said, look at my morning thoughts. The second one. First one is my baby girl uh, turns two today. And the second one is seven years ago this week, I took my wife out of the strip club. And she was like, <laughs> she just laughed. Because when Mr. Me, I go do my madness, she always laughed. Just like when we did do the breakup thing, I'm in a car, I cry. You know, I got everything, you know. <laughs> I sniff, look, nose not. I fly out everything and then believe. Then believe. But apparently, not too many people are believing now. <laughs> but it's seven years. It, this week that passed made it seven years. So we are on our seventh year fully now. And we have two children together, and one is four, about to be four. Kai will be four in a month, and Malani is two today. So we do have whole heap of time to actually have some fun and do some things and these kind of things. See, uh, I I remember, and I didn't believe then either. Peking, Peking. <laughs> it, it's crazy that it's crazy how a lot of people believe it, and it's also crazy how this that I just said is going to go. Cause somebody stop watch right there so when I said I took her out of strip club somebody just cut out that excerpt there stop watch and them gone with it already the boy the girl I want a stripper yeah she used to sell catches at Miami in a strip club and that's so the boy I get her from watch and see because that's that's how they do that's how they do you you feed the rumor mill sometimes you know 
because that's their form of entertainment. So you just feed them some time with it and make them go and fill up them belly with the foolishness. And then you just, hey, keep it moving. So anyhow, watch back the live. The numbers jumped up about 70 people, bro. Fam, me know. Me know, but that's how it go. Ah, so I get boring now. I'm still a talk about him picnic. Ross, him said something about take her out at strip club. See, come, come back, come back. Tune in, tune in. See it, yeah? So you take her out at the strip club and then what? Which club she that stripping her? Which no more? A lie you tell. Me gone, yeah, man. That's <laughs> that's how it work. That's how it work. All right. The last one, North Carolina. This man won 10 million US dollars and gets a life sentence for murdering his girlfriend after winning 10 million US dollars. Thank you all for all the happy anniversaries. Um out there seventh year you know what them say they say if you can make it to uh pass past the seventh year then you can make it the rest of it i don't really believe all that i just believe that if you keep making it you will keep making it it takes two people to want to make it you alone can do it one person can't do it one hand can't clap so she my partner and we're making it we're regular people we encounter obstacles just like everybody else go through our motions Someday I'm going to want to chat to her. Someday she don't want to chat to me. Someday she not, she's not my friend. Someday I'm not her friend. You know what I'm saying? And all that stuff. But we have beautiful babies together. We have a beautiful home together. And we have a beautiful life together. And we're just trying to make it grow. Right? Into more beauty. And that's where it's at right now. See? Don't know what tomorrow might bring. I can't tell the future. I'm not a future person. But I know that we're putting in work today. And that's what matters. See? All right. With that said, I appreciate each and every one of you, man, who support her channel, who support my channel, and who's been here with us throughout the whole process, the growth, the, 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 the ups and the downs, and all that. One day, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. I'm a grandmother of that. Anyhow, North Carolina, North Carolina man who won $10 million lottery dollars in the lottery gets sentenced to life in prison for killing his girlfriend. May I remind you or tell you straight up up front that this was a brother. And what the brother do is the brother gets some money, married enough, he married enough, get some money and decides, say, he might go take up one girl now who is 30 years younger than him. So I'm leaving wife who has been with him for how many years? We got to take up this young girl. Now, I've spoken to the grown men on here before, right? Brother, what part of your mind make you think that a female who is 30 years your junior is seeing forever with you? Hmm? What, what made you think that this girl is going to love you for life? What, what made you think that it wasn't the $10 million, it was me? You started feeling yourself because of the you couldn't get her before the $10 million. So now this $10 million got you convinced that it's you that she's here for and not the $10 million. You're tripping, man. You're tripping. Yeah. And then again, remember we talked about aging and physiologically being realistic, right? So there's certain things when man can do and can't do is certain things how man body operate after a certain age and all these things you know the little thing probably did they look for round two and three and four and you barely can get around one you get her a half of a half of round one and these kind of things you can't really do nothing so this guy was 54 and the girl was 24 that's 30 years of a difference right michael hill Roxy, Roxy 21, I appreciate you greatly, Roxy, says, happy birthday, princess, with a huge donation, princess. Malani, y'all get enough birthday present, my girl. You'll get like $100 already. I appreciate y'all so much, man. Thank you. So this man, Michael Hill, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. That means he will never, ever, ever come out of prison. This is where I compare the Jamaica justice system to the U.S. justice system. And I look at where Chantel White got killed, murdered, multiple gunshots to her face in front of everybody. And her killer was able to say, she upset me. 
and me gave her everything and she used me. I have next man and took her life in that manner and got 18 years. You couldn't murder a female in the U.S. like that and get 18 years. I know for sure you would not be coming back out of prison. See, this fool here, win the lotto, $10 million, and then go earn himself life in prison without the possibility of parole. It's not even like they give him 25 years before eligible for parole. The judge said without the possibility of parole, which means you will never come out of prison unless you're coming out in a body bag. You passed away in there. Marvin, the point... Jamaica Kerr says they want to make sure that don't spend the money upon appeals. Yeah, but he ain't coming out. He's not coming out. So North Carolina man won $10 million on a scratch-off ticket. God, you can't, you can't smile for me, so. On a scratch-off ticket five years ago, and he will spend the rest of his life behind bars in the fatal shooting of his girlfriend. Let me cut the story short and stop going through all this because I was going to read you the whole information, but check it out. He was married, right? And the woman that he was married to, he was married to her for a substantial amount of years. I forgot how many years. As soon as he won that money, his, his lotto ticket, his winning, him even take picture with her when he went to go collect the money and carry him wife. And him and his wife hold up the big check on, on TV, you know? And them not do like in a Jamaica, you know? Them not hide them face out on the show, them two eyes. When they in a raccoon mask, when them come pick up their money, then they not up here. Up here, them show them face, right? Cause it was him and his wife, his life partner, supposed to be. This money get to this man's head. The breakdown of the money is after Uncle Sam took out him taxes and all this, the man decided he wants a lump sum payment. He doesn't want annuities. He was supposed to take $500,000 a year for 20 years. He said, no, give me the whole life one time. So they snatched out their fees and whatnot, and he walked away with $6 million in cash, right? All right. After the $6 million, he had to pay back Uncle Sam, <laughs> Uncle Sam some more money. So he ended up, he cleared upwards of $4.1 million after federal and state taxes withholdings. Okay. So you never had that money before. But and your ten million dollar gone down to four million, but none of it was yours in the first place. So here I'm sitting with a substantial amount of money, anyways. And the first thing he thought about was ditch wifey. Remember yesterday when I said make sure that the woman who is sitting with you in that hoop tee, that bucket, that putt putt that can barely carry go anywhere car there is the same woman that's gonna be sitting right next to you. When you're riding in that fresh brand new Benz or whatever it is you decide to buy, your Bima X7, whatever it is you decide to buy. It's stuff like this I was talking about. And then when we talk to the older guys and I tell them, don't think that young girl wants you for just you. It's stuff like that I was talking about. Three years later, his girlfriend, Grime, was reported missing by the mother on July 20th of 2020, according to prosecutors. She was 23 years old, actually. She was 23 years old, and eventually she was found dead with a bullet wound to the back of her head in a hotel room in North Carolina. Now, here is what happened. He found out, right, that this little 23-year-old was cheating on him. So he was holding it in. He never want to tell her because he didn't want, uh, hey, I know what you're doing because he, he didn't want to lose her. He didn't want her to run, right? And she looked like young and she bring excitement to him life and thing like that. Remember, I you know your left wife, you know, you're up on the road with a young girl now, sleeping in hotels and traveling and these things. All right. She thought, she thought he was asleep. They were traveling. They stopped at a hotel. Him thinks that she did. She thinks that he was sleeping. Him, you know, Amanda, she probably gave my one piece. And you know, in my 50, in my 54, and she's 23. She in him, she roll him over and him start. <laughs> so she rolled over, turned her back to him, pick up her phone, and start texting with somebody. He's not sleeping. This is what he testified. He was up. 
he read the text and the text set him off. His gun was right there in the side drawer. So I read the text and the text I said, I miss you. Can't wait to come back to you. I'll be home soon. I love riding on that thing. How you put it on me. All then something there. You can't imagine the man in there. Jesus Christ. But they must do it on the inside. Because you want to read more of the text. Because you're thinking, as, I'm not sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Is this a dream kind of thing? Yeah. And the text message I go. Text message I go. And she sold, she didn't know that she on her side, right? Yeah, she had got the phone. Any, anyhow, you there with somebody and you see them do this in bed. Late night. I'm going to kick them out of the rotted bed. Call that me that up. Foot. Go. That's it. Lock my room door and go sleep. You don't have to do all that. Just go. Go to the next room. Go into the garage. Go somewhere. Go chat to who you want. Chat to all this. But that's what she was doing, pretending she's sleeping with her back to him. And the man quietly roll over and I read all our message. Reach over, pick up his gun. In the same position she was holding that phone is how they found her on our side with our back turned to where he was laying. Shot her once in the back of her head. That's it. And that's how I'm kill her. Now his wife is somewhere saying, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You moved them out my way. Sorry, the girl had to go. But she knew about me when she came in the picture. She didn't care. She thought she was in the millions. Wife hit the jackpot. Now, wife, can I get herself a new... You, now, now you see all the faults that you came with. Wife, can I remix all that now? Well... Him did shot. I mean, never really into shot, man. I just threw me did grow for love him. I mean, did I work with it? So now, me have my money good. Me have to look at tall man this time. Him did huggish, and I used to work with it. Me have to look at nice man this time. Him did. <laughs> Wife gets to reset her life. She gets to reset her life with the money. I think somebody asked. I think wife asked me yesterday who gets the money. It's her. His wife gets the money. Okay, so basically all he did was take him like a time, go cheat, panar, frig up him own life, go in a prison for the rest of his life. Wifey has all the money now, and she can surely say, I want a divorce. No longer want to be with you. You put yourself in this predicament. You got life without possibility of parole. I'm not coming to visit you in no prison, and I'm definitely not waiting for you until the end of life. So bye, right? Let that lesson be learned, stupid ass man. Anyhow, I don't know I go already. It's Friday morning. Wifey is going to the gym. I'm trying to stay fit, keep myself feeling and looking good on these kind of things. You already know health is wealth. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. Storm I come our way. I'm going to check for me. I will check in. I'm not going to know if I blow away or not. And I might see me broadcasting, flying down the road or something like that. But all should be well. All right. Get out and get some sunshine. You're melanated people. The sun is your power, your energizer. And put your bare foot them upon the ground and be grounded. Bless up. Manners and respect to each and every one of you. And if you see me out there, just heal me up. All right? One love. I'm out. Peace. Baby, you ready for the gym?